Welcome to this road trip in MXA. I mean, this week in MXA, this video, this week in MXA, we are driving to Washougal, currently sleep deprived because we had a long week last week. Uh, we were at the Panic Rip Camp training riders for three days in a row. We spent a fourth day at the track at Glen Helen testing and riding some cool bikes and then rode yesterday, Monday, uh, stayed up late last night packing the van and now we're driving to Washington National because Josh Fout, MXA test rider, good friend of mine and uh, he truly embodies the wrecking crew mentality because he has wrecked a few of our bikes and uh, he does a great job of fixing them which makes it a lot easier to keep him along board. So he's racing amateur day, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday this week and then he's wrenching for me on Saturday. So I'm racing the national. Uh, a lot of fun stuff going on. We just tested Antonio Caroli's bike and this weekend we're racing the 23 Husky and KTM 450s. Next week we're testing Honda 450 uh, for 2023. So a lot of stuff going on but in this video there is so much news and breaking news really that's going on in the motocross and supercross world. It seems like every day you wake up and you see a new press release or a new topic coming out about a rider that's switching teams, a rider that's retired, a rider that's coming out of retirement. And uh, one big topic that we want to touch on in this video, it's not groundbreaking, it's been out for a couple weeks now, but Ken Roxon is racing the World Supercross Championship and it's a three round series for their pilot year. Uh, they're going to Wales in the United Kingdom over in Europe, UK. They're going there first, and then uh, they're going to Australia for a double header, two rounds down in Australia, and then they're going to Indonesia for the third round of uh, this first World Supercross Championship promoted by FIM. The interesting topic though that I, not a lot of people understand um, is that Ken Roxon wasn't hired by a team like Moto Concepts Honda. He wasn't hired by a team like CDR, Yamaha, or MPK Motorsports, or some of the other teams that are racing the FIM World Supercross Championship. He was actually hired by the promoters themselves. They paid to have Ken Roxon go and do that series, just like they're doing with Eli Tomac. Eli Tomac is racing just the first round. He's not doing Australia and Indonesia. He's just racing in the UK. Um, so it's an interesting topic because now the teams like Moto Concepts, uh, like CDR Yamaha, like Firepower Honda, or uh, Genuine Fa Honda Parts Honda, these guys are all competing against uh, with their team members that they're allowed to have, which they're allowed to have 2450 and 2250. They're all competing against technically the promoter who hired on Ken Roxon. So the big question is, is Ken Roxon going to show up as a wild card? Uh, because they're allowed to have two wild cards in every race, or are they going to slot him into a team that has open open spots under their tent? So very interesting stuff. Um, something to keep your eyes on. Check out MotocrossActionMag.com as we'll surely be following this. And uh, as soon as we find out more information about what Ken Roxon will be riding and which team he'll be riding for, if he'll even be on a team, uh, we'll be we'll be documenting it on our website. So interesting stuff there. Um, and a lot of wild stuff going on in the industry. Other big news, Dean Wilson announced that he is planning to retire after the 2023 season. Uh, we also know that Christian Craig is signed with the Rockstar Husqvarna team. Malcolm Stewart has another year with the Rockstar Husqvarna team, which leads us to think that Dean Wilson won't be on that team for 2023. There's a lot of uh, people pointing and saying that he will be on the firepower on the team next year. So Dean Wilson, He's a fan favorite. Uh, I'm personally a huge fan of Dean Wilson and hoping all the best for him. Right now he's recovering from his big injury that he had in Supercross. A uh, video that Husqvarna just posted on YouTube and we put on our website shows Dean Wilson's Supercross season. Talks, uh, he talks about the injury that he had and uh, what it was like to recover from that. And so at the end of the video, he also talks that he thinks and he's planning on 2023 being his final round of race, uh, final year of racing. So a lot of riders announcing retirement. Also, Alex Martin announced that he's retiring this year after the outdoors. Uh, and then we also have other riders who are coming out of retirement back into racing, like Antonio Caroli, Cole Seeley for World Supercross, Ryan Dungey for the outdoors, and more. So interesting stuff. Um, Dean Wilson, obviously, he can still change his mind. He's got a whole nother year to go. Uh, but Either way, it'll still be cool to 
know that Deepus will be racing for at least one more year after this, and I do believe that he'll be racing up the last few outdoor rounds as well, probably starting at Unadilla after the Pro Motocross season takes a two-week break. Also, other news, uh, Millville National was a lot of fun to watch last weekend. It was an epic battle between Eli Tomac and Chase Sexton at the front of the 450 pack. Now, we do have MXA test rider Josh Bozeman joining the series again this weekend at Washougal. And so I'm excited to see, maybe I can get in between Chase Sexton and Eli Tomac, help uh, help the underdog Chase Sexton maybe gain a couple more points back on, on Tomac. We'll see if I can stick it out there on the podium with those guys. But the big topic right now is an interview we have with Roger DeCoster. It's on our website. Jim Kimball did this interview with Roger at the Millville National. And Roger explained that they're looking for a 450 rider to drop down to the 250 class to compete at the Motocross of Nations, a part of Team USA. It's pretty obvious that Chase Saxon and Eli Tomac are the top Americans in the 450 class right now. Next, next up on the list will be Jason Anderson, Justin Barsha, and Christian Craig. However, I didn't know this until it was on our website, but Jim Kimball did the interview with Roger DeCoster. Roger said that Jason Anderson might need a back surgery at the end of outdoors. Uh, kind of breaking news there. I didn't know he had an injury going on, but that Jason Anderson wouldn't be able to do uh, the Team USA Motocross of Nations because of those reasons. So. Uh, that means it's up to Marsha and Christian Craig to race Motocross of Nations and drop down to the 250 class. Let us know in the comments who you would rather see on a 250 at the Red Bud Motocross of Nations this year. And as I mentioned at the beginning of this video, we are driving north. We're on the 5 freeway. We're about halfway right now coming into Sacramento. We're headed to Washougal. It's going to be a lot of fun racing the National this weekend. I raced Paula National on a Honda CRF 450. I raced Hangtown National on a KX, Kawasaki KX 450, and now I'm racing the Washougal National on the Husqvarna FC 450. Uh, this bike is pretty much stock. We got an FMF muffler on there. I got a gut seat cover, uh, Phoenix handlebars, and then we also have the WP cone valve forks and the WP tracks and shock. And it's the lower 2023 Husky platform, so excited to see how that works out at uh, Washougal this weekend. Stay tuned for our video. We're excited to show you guys more about the Nationals, give you some more behind the scenes footage of what it's like, and hopefully I can do a little bit better than I did in the first two rounds. We got to ride Antonio Caroli's bike yesterday at Paula. That was a blast. There's so, so much. I could talk for hours about that bike, and I'm thankful that I got to ride it now and not a year ago or two or three years ago because being an MXA test rider, I've been able to ride a lot of motorcycles. I've been able to test a lot of good and bad motorcycles, and I've learned so much about suspension and how it works and, and how the engine works. So now I feel like I can appreciate it much more this time testing it than I would have if I would have tested it a couple years ago uh, or even you know, three or four or five years ago before I was a full-time MXA test rider. So super fun riding Caroli's bike. I'm not going to tell you what I thought about it because we have a video coming out very soon and explaining all the details on that bike, but I did get my good buddy Cole Zeller, MXA test rider who helps us out all the time with photos and videos and testing here and there. Cole got to hop on the bike. He's a fellow O'Neill racing rider. He's a fellow off-road rider and uh, he hopped on the bike so we got his opinion right here. Cole Zeller. Your favorite feller. Your favorite feller, Cole Zeller. I mean, what uh, what do we got going on here, and what are the emotions like right now? Well, uh, I always wanted to ride a bike like this, and uh, it pretty much doesn't get any better than this. Yeah. So today we are riding Antonio Caroli's uh, 450. It's pretty so. pretty sick. What what's uh, are you nervous? Excited? Like what, what's the what's the emotions right now before you head on on the track? Uh, I'm just really excited. I mean, it's a dream come true to ride this thing. Yeah. And uh, just see what it's all about. All right, good stuff. Yeah. Have some fun. Throw some whipper tails. Woo. <laughs> here yeah and there's like a little square edge at the 
the bottom of it and it gave the bar a kick. <laughs> I'm like, not this bike. Yeah. <laughs> what, like, what was your first impression? Like you get on the track, you start hitting some bumps. What did you first think? Uh, it just felt really sharp. Like the forks are so stiff that they, I don't think they move hardly at all for me. And uh, so like under a lean or anytime I'm not like super straight going through a rut, the bike wants to push. Yeah. Sure, but for sure. What about power was sick. Power? Yeah. It was super controllable. It's like I could race that power. Yeah. I couldn't race the suspension, but I could race the power. Totally, totally. And uh, yeah, still faster than probably anything I've ridden. Oh, that's awesome. So. Sick. Another topic I want to touch on is the Panic Rev Christian Motocross Camp that we did last week at Lake Elsinore. I was there Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, training riders hanging out, playing some fun camp games with the Panic Rev crew. It was a lot of fun. We had 60 campers plus siblings and parents and supporters that were there. So a big camp overall um, and a lot of fun. The riders from age, they range, the ages range from five to 55 years old. Um, and so we have a lot of fun training and working with these guys. The track was good. It got some good runs for us and it was great for practicing technique. And I always say, Whenever I'm coaching riders at these camps and working on technique, I come out a better rider because of it, because I'm telling them what to do for three days straight. And then when I get back on the bike, I gotta practice what I preach. So hopefully that comes out at the Washington National this weekend. And I can carry some good momentum through the corners and have my technique on point. That will be cool. So here's a couple cool clips from Panagraph. And uh, it's a lot of fun out there with those guys. Alright guys, thanks for tuning in to this video. We're sleep deprived currently. I woke up at like 2.30 this morning. Josh drove from Big Bear to my house. He woke up at 1.30 this morning or 1 a.m. And Trevor, I think he was up at like 2 a.m. So sleep deprived. Not sure if, how long we're going to stay on this road. But uh, stay tuned, motocrossactionmag.com for the latest news, reviews, race results, product tests, bike tests, and more. And we'll see you in the next video. Whoa!